My job today is to talk about what must be done to ensure young people fully participate in, in government. So this is what I do every day. And I shared a slide very last minute, so I don't know if it's even, is it? It's good, okay. Uh, so as it comes up, uh, it's been said, I run an organization called Siasa Place. So Siasa, uh, we felt that young people are not engaging in politics enough. And at the moment, we work in 12 counties, and we have a network of thousands of youth online and physically, in reality. But the story of why Siasa. So I'm going to give you reasons as to why it's so hard for young people to engage. The fact that the certificate was rejected three times. So the first time I went to the NGO board and I said I want it to be called Siasa Place, then they tell you you have to give three names, alternative names. The other names were the Siasa Place, Siasa Place, Siasa Place Limited were the three names. And I refused to drop that name because I really felt passionate about it. And many times the receptionist, Tanaisi office is a gava. The receptionist can be mean. I don't understand. And then me coming looking like a child, so <laughs> it's even worse. So she's like, young lady, sasa jina ita pitisha. There's no way. And of course, it was hard. And um, at some point, we wanted to sue uh, the NGO board because they were refusing me to keep a name that I wanted and were saying that I'm trying to form a political party. So I began to question, what's so wrong if young people want to form a political party. And then I realized the history. So some of you are university students. Do you know why your terms are in a particular order? Why you have holidays maybe in August? Why do you close then? Do you understand why? Or why there are some terms that are very long, then the holiday is very short? You know, a lot of times we talk about 1982 and the coup that almost happened for a few hours. And people don't realize how involved university students were. And that was the beginning of the end for student mobilizing and organizing, 1982. A lot of students don't realize that JM Karaoke was such an important figure to young people. And I've not even talked about Who's another person who was involved in the coup who was a student? Name one. Do you know? You don't know. Who? Say louder, be confident. Oreko, another one? Or one of the ones who actually passed on, who was actually killed? What was his name when Sonu was, Sonu was banned? Guys, I'm giving you homework. I'm giving you homework. So the reason why your school terms have been changed is so that people cannot commemorate the death of JM Karaoke. So that people cannot come and mobilize and say there's something wrong with our country, we want more. And the reason why Siasa is banned from young people registering Siasa is because Moi banned it in the 1990s. We don't know this. And so me, I'm discovering these things as I'm coming innocently to create Siasa Place. So I figured, eh, Kumbe, there are some challenges here that are blocking young people from participating in governance even before they think about participating. Another thing that we recognized was why was the government so interested in me? The whole profile of Siasa Place, it's an educational platform. We educate youth on the Constitution. It had to go to the president's office. It had to go to his desk to say whether I will be allowed to register. And so when you start forming an organization and you start thinking about these things, you begin to see that anyway there are challenges that we're very unaware about in this space. And so when patients talks about online, it's important to also understand that we started online. I also didn't have money, but the internet was free, especially in Tao, 
when I would be at Java or some restaurant somewhere there that had internet. And so we would go with our friends and order water and just sit there. <laughs> you're laughing because you have to order something. And you're just there and you're tweeting and forming platforms, talking about issues in the country as young people that you want to see change. Can we please go to the next slide? So overall, just to give you a general idea of what we do, we focus on young people, we focus on engaging young people in policies, and we focus on their participation. And I'll explain to you the different avenues young people can be involved. So like mentioned, 2015, that's when we were formed, and our vision is people like you, you're informed. So when I ask you that question, you know I am talking about someone called Tito. So that when you're here, you're informed, you're liberated, and you're living in a space where you're democratic. The next slide. So when we talk about CSA Place and some of the challenges, why is this pyramid important? And I love the video you shared about work, working in a space where as a leader, you want people to be brothers and sisters and passionate about where they work. So for us, this is our pyramid. So in the office, when you come in, it's the first thing that you see in the office. And number one is the constitution, because we believe that the rule of law is important, and like I told you, our work is to teach youth on the rule of law. But integrity. Do you know how hard it is to find people of integrity in this country right now? It is hard. And sometimes I sit down and I don't blame them, because maisha ngumu, Guys really are just trying to get day to day. So if an opportunity presents itself and someone bribes you, what wengi watachukua? And me right now, I'm dealing with a situation where someone has bribed me with 50K. It came to my Mpesa. And I called my friend Wilkista. She also got it. And she's like, we need to return it. Ha. <laughs> Aha. Me, I have it, by the way. And I've thought about it. I'm like, anyway, but things are, things are thick. This week alone, I'm panda for things, like by 20 bob EV. If you are not keen, I'm panda kidogo. And I'm like, anyway, I need this. I need this money. And, you know, she keeps telling me, we need to have a meeting with him. We were with him yesterday. You think we brought it up? Hmm. So she's like, she calls me aside. She's like, Nerima. You are the one who has to bring it up because you, you, you know you're the elder. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy had just come from a meeting at State House. How am I bringing it up at you were returning money? <laughs> and he knows the president. <laughs> I just said, you know what? This problem, we will deal another day. <laughs> Next slide. Maybe you guys will help me with a solution. <laughs> so our model is to do civic education. So teaching youth about the constitution, teaching them how they can engage government, not just national, county government as well. And so we have like an institute where we have fellows and they learn about policies and they go and work with the county. And right now we're in cohort three. They're actually graduating in December. And we also do a lot of research. So for youth to be able to engage government, these three things are important because they have to know how. So you have to educate them as to how. And then number two, you have to be able to train them to know when. When do you engage government? At what point? Who can engage government? What does engaging government look like? Then the third, research. Do you know how hard it is to find research on young people? It is so hard. Even this election that has just passed, we have written a letter to IBC just asking them, how many youth were elected? How many? Because you have that information. Because by the time the parties were doing the primaries, see what we lipa that nomination fee, theirs was half. So one ajua. But that information has not come. And this is the second letter I've written. So now I'm getting to the point where, why is it so hard for me to get information on youth? And, and the only people who have some information is the center of multi-party, CMD. They have done it by themselves, where they have looked at parliament and they are guessing, guessing. 
I think this one is around 33, Ajafika 35 Bado. And then they show that out of all the members in parliament right now, 58, 58 are below the age of 35. That's an increase from the last election that we had. So we're seeing a bit of an improvement, but not so much, right? Just because of the challenges that youth have. We know how expensive it is to vie. My husband vied for member of parliament and he came second. And I look up to people like you because it is utter madness to want to vie in this country. It is mad. And even sometimes you would come home and I'm just saying, son. So I'm like, what happened? Ah, it's nothing. It's nothing. People were fighting. <laughs> but you know, he doesn't want to tell me, you know, guys were fighting, and they are fighting in church. fighting in church. So it became to a point where I'm just like, by the way, don't even tell me what you did today. Staki kujua. Because if I know, I'll remove you from this madness. But we need people like you. Because we cannot continue having hooligans in government. Because that's what's happening now. Only the rough and the tough and the rich are somehow crossing through. And you'll find very few people, the outliers, who manage to ingear. But guess what? When you're surrounded by sharks, you either turn into a shark or you will be eaten. That's it. So we need more young people in those spaces. Next slide, please. So I'm going to break down why these programs exist. And it's the different avenues as to how young people can be engaged. We have Siasa Talks, which I've told you, is like open engagements of young people just like this. And that's why I was saying this is very powerful where people are able to share and share experiences. And this we do in the county level. So I've already shared we work in 12 counties. And some of them we work in very, very rural areas. And I have seen the challenges. So just like a meeting like this, and I love the fact that we have a good balance of young men and young women. Me, I've been to political meetings, and I'm the only woman. And it is a forum of 200 men. And I'm talking about Kericho County. Because politics is not for women. And what do you do? So we found ourselves now having to partner with like our friend Bina, who focuses on chamas and bringing politics to chamas. So it's not to force women or to encourage them to enter these spaces. They already feel uncomfortable. Imagine inviting women there are like seven of them who manage to come because women are also busy with the babies, with the house, with Biashara. Then you, you force her to come for a meeting and then there are seven and then there are 200 men. And then you tell her, woman, give us a point. You think she'll talk? She will be scared out of her mind. She will not speak. And then there's always that woman who is considered the mad woman of the village. Akonamdomo, so this courageous one, she will stand, she'll say something, but that woman you will find a lot of times she's a single mom. Because what happens if she's not, the husband will be made fun of. So these are the cultural dynamics, yeah, that I'm sharing with you because I've actually had a young woman come up to me to say, hey, Nerima, now me, I've come for this meeting. I've enjoyed sana, sana, sana. But now when I go home, hmm, I know Leo, my husband is going to hit me. Atani chapa Leo. So I'm like, why? How do I explain why I was gone for three hours? Nilikuwa nimenda wapi? And then, sija hasol, nimekuja nimbani without anything. How do I explain that? And I said, what? We have a serious problem. And you'll find also in rural areas, there's a lot of young women who become mothers very early. By the time they're 18, they have like three children. And so how do you engage that woman? Those are the challenges. And how we can make it better is meeting women where they already are, or meeting men where they already are. 
in between football if they can pay attention after Manu and Arsenal. If people can even sit down, kwa base, you go to where they are. And that's how we can engage young people. Siasa Wednesdays. This is a very online engagement. So, like Patience has mentioned, a lot of you, a lot of us are on social media. But what are we engaging on social media? We will know exactly what happened to Vera Sidika. Eh? We know. Hmm? The moment it happened, we'll even know what Trevor Mbija had for lunch. But you ask about what happened in the county or what happened on TV today. What was on the news, by the way? Unless it's controversial, Kabisa. You know, that's when we, we want to know. We have a thirst to know it. But as long as it has something to do with, I don't know, government, accountability, is of it is nanibo, we just scroll through quickly. We make sure, by the way, where is it on my timeline? And anyone who posts those things, they just like to talk about politics. In fact, sometimes we hide them on our timelines because that's all they do, right? So this is another place where we're encouraging the youth to make sure that they're talking about things that matter, but touch on their way of living, the politics of the day. I encourage you, or I urge you, at least one time a day, to have an opinion about something that happened in the news. Simple. Just what is your friends thinking about? What do you guys think? We have to get out of those bubbles. And then finally, the fellowship I was sharing about, where we're in cohort three. And this is now where people apply and they go through a one-year program. It's both online and physical. And then we assign them to work in a county. And they work in that county for three months and then they decide, is this something that I want to do for the rest of my life or not? And we've seen the most interesting thing because to apply for this fellowship, you don't have to have a degree. We have had people who are just class eight, leavers, just people who can write and read. Because what we have found is you will find someone who is very influential in the community, but they didn't even see form one. But the way the community listens to them, if they understood the way county works, the county government works, and you place them in those positions, you'll see a huge shift in how even the community views them. And it's because of these engagements we've had young people actually elected as MCAs this time. We've had three, and, and they were not elected because of money. It's because the community said, as we've seen what you've been doing with this car fellowship, Abu, you enter and you see what else you can do. Next slide. And another issue that I see with youth that makes it challenging for them to engage is information. So every Tuesday, we will share in small pictures and texts about something. So this past Tuesday on our platforms, we shared about cabinet nominees. And we would share about what are the requirements that you need to be able to get that position. Because we also found that people are not going to go and research. So we create these small infographics and we share it on these social media platforms so that someone can look at it for five minutes and they have gathered something from it. And we realize that especially with youth, if we're going to communicate with young people, we have to talk like young people. We are young people. So a lot of times we lose information because it's packaged in a lot of documents. And Write Africa. This is a program where we encourage youth to write. We actually pay our writers. People write on my platform and we pay them. Because we need youth to see writing as an opportunity. The amount of things that we see documentation is lacking. And when I work with youth groups, I see that they really struggle with documenting their work, proving their work, because also documentation is related to accountability. So if you can't write, what are you going to build? 
and, and I've seen it a struggle, especially for youth. So that's one way. Writing is a very powerful tool. And it's through writing, I'm sure a lot of you, you academics, can focus a lot of time doing PhDs on why the youth didn't vote in 2022. And that is a research that's coming, by the way, that we're involved in. Because if we don't understand the now, we can't understand the future we're going to. And it's a very different future. Right now we're in a transition. We're in a transition of power. And the youth, we're sleeping. Tunalala tu sana, like 444. And there are leaders who are organizing as we speak. Who is taking 2027? But in that conversation. Yet, majority population. Next slide. So I've shared with you the programs and now I'm entering to what Opondo is coming after me to do. And, and these are some of the programs that we have seen changes in working with the youth. And it's the simplest things in terms of how can a young person be involved. And it's like this story of a young mother dropping her son in school and he needed to go to the toilet. And she walks him to the toilet and it looks like a death trap. She was so shocked that this is where you go. That she came and she asked, what can I do? I don't want him to use this toilet. And the youth organized themselves to where the government actually responded. But the story you don't know, government is used to ignoring young people. But the difference is, what we would do is when we submit a letter, we would complain how we are being ignored on Facebook. And that same day, we would be trending because we complained on Facebook. And that same day, somehow, some county official will get my number and say, please put that post down. Government doesn't like attention, especially negative attention. Especially attention where the young people have put attention, they don't like. And so if we can capitalize on using our spaces to highlight issues, you will see change. The next slide, please. And women. It's very difficult, especially for women, to talk about politics and governance. Imagine we are bullied so much more. Me, I was bullied by Robert Alai so much, I just had to block him. I had to. And sometimes it's just like, if Robert Alai met me, he would be so embarrassed that a big man like that is insulting me. You know, he's never met me before. And I keep saying, if he met me, he would be so embarrassed some of the things he's insulted me. He'll even wonder. So sometimes that audacity online that we talk about, it happens. And sure enough, we, we had to start a program where we encourage women especially to even talk about governance on their online platforms, even though they are going to be bullied. Because what happens is people start asking you, this is a way, way, you're talking about this, like you know what you're talking about, do you know anything? And they face a lot of that. Next slide. Next slide, please. So as I also bring it close to an end, another thing that I find important is youth organizing themselves and coming together and forming networks. And that's why we formed the Youth Serving Organizations Network. And actually, Emerging Leaders Foundation is within this network. And at the moment, there are about 22 organizations. Because of this network, we have a reach of 36 counties. And in the next year, we are intentionally planning to have a reach of 47. If we can have a network in every county in this country, organizing will become easier. So you need the power. And as I conclude, it's just to share that we have to recognize that some of the challenges when it comes to young people's engagement in government is ageism. There's a stereotype. I get stereotyped all the time. And sometimes I love it because I get to know how a true character is. I've had someone walking into my office when the whole team had gone for lunch and it was only me. And so he knocks on the door and I welcome him and he says, I need to see your director. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> let me leave you a message because she's not in. So I get a sticky note, naandika jina yake, naandika namba yake, and I tell him, if you come back in 30 minutes, the whole team will be back. He comes back. And so now the whole team is back, he walks in, he's welcomed by the receptionist, and he's like, I need to see your director. She's right there. The look on his face, and he wanted to die. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Do you have time to meet me? No, I don't. And it goes to show you that we have a particular view of how someone is to look. And for me, it's to say you can be somebody and you don't have to look a particular way, and that's politics. You don't have to look like a politician to care about politics, to be involved in politics. Accountability. There are too many cases being dropped. We need to be concerned. The economy is going to affect us the most. And if we are silent, we're the ones who are going to feel this pinch a lot for a longer time. So I keep telling young people, you need to care about accountability and find a way to plug in. Otherwise, we will not have a country in the next five years to talk about. And it should be a concern to you. I've talked about networks, but I also want to share how important it is to have a peaceful country. If you do not have peace, you cannot build anything. When I talk to youth, they say, I don't like politics. And I say, oh, okay. But you know, if you have a bad government, you can't have a peaceful country. Then they look at me, huh? I'm like, have you ever seen someone growing a business in conflict? So you're running away from your country. So you become a refugee, Unakimbia. What are you building? So when I hear you saying, I want to build a biashara, but you're doing all this aside from government. Those laws will impact you directly. Even how you do that business. If you don't pay attention, you will realize you can't even start a biashara. And right now, KRA, KRA is busy collecting taxes. And they will find a way to tax you. Mark my words, Nairobi County, there will be announcement very soon. And those people who walk through the streets doing selling mitumba, they will not be able to do it without taxes. For those of you who have online platforms and you're selling mitumba, you will not be able to do it without paying taxes. They are finding a way to tax you. So you need to care what they are doing with your money. And no one is going to tell you and come and wake you up to care. It's your decision. So find a way to be involved. So for youth to fully participate, they must know the challenges that exist and be wary of those challenges and understand to work around those challenges. I've shared so many today here and not even all of them. They have to research. You have to know information. I can't come and teach you everything and you memorize. You have to be concerned. You have to read the papers, know the data, understand GDP. We just got rice from Ukraine. Did you guys know that after the war started? These things, they matter because it matters how much we are paying for them and the fact that now we have GMO, you know that? And the next shift on war is going to be climate. And there are countries organizing how they are going to buy our water. Do you know that? Do you know water will become more expensive and rare commodity to you? The way we take our coffee and they go process it and sell better coffee, more expensive and sell to us, they'll do that with water. That's why COP27 is being held in Africa. They're debating how much they're going to buy your water for. Youth don't know. So we need to be more concerned about what is happening in these governments and the changes that they are working toward and what they are doing. Other than that, I am done. Unless there are any questions, thank you. I'm done. Time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>